A breach block, or breach block, is the part of the firearm action that closes the breach of a weapon, whether small arms or artillery, at the moment of firing. Variants A way of closing the breach or chamber is an essential part of any breech loading weapon or firearm. Perhaps the simplest way of achieving this is a break action, in which the barrel, forestock and breech pivot on an hinge that joins the front assembly to the rear of the firearm, incorporating the rear of the breech, the butt and usually, the trigger mechanism. A breech block is a separate component and is not a feature of the break action. A breech block must close against the breech for firing but be able to be retracted or otherwise moved for loading or unloading or to remove a spent cartridge. This article primarily addresses the matter of breech block design, as opposed to the action, which relates more with how the mechanism is operated, even if the distinction is not always clear. Rotating bolt Usually referred to as a bolt rather than a breech block, a rotating bolt is perhaps the most common variant. It is so called, because its operation is similar to a pad bolt or barrel bolt. The bolt slides in the receiver along the axis of the barrel and is rotated in the same axis to lock or unlock it against a closed breech. It is the basis for the bolt action, in which the bolt is rotated and retracted by an handle attached to the bolt. In some designs, the handle, sometimes called a cocking handle, rotates to lock against a shoulder in the receiver or body of the firearm. This type of locking is usually reserved for low-pressure applications such as the .22 calories rimfire series. More often, the bolt locks closed with two or more lugs that operate like a bayonet mount. Multiple lugs permit a smaller degree of rotation to lock and unlock the breech. Most types are front-locking and have the lugs mounted near the breech face. A notable exception is the rear locking system used in the Lee Enfield. Rotating bolts can be adapted to automatic or semi-automatic designs and lever or pump actions. In these cases, the bolt is held by a bolt carrier. With the breech locked, an initial rearward movement of the bolt carrier causes the bolt to rotate and unlock. Similarly, when closing the breech, the final forward movement of the carrier causes the bolt to rotate and lock the breech. This action is commonly achieved by a slot cut in the carrier that engages a pin through the bolt perpendicular to the axis of the barrel. It is a type of linear cam. Straight pull bolt action firearms do not require the operator to rotate the cocking handle to cycle the action. Some straight pull designs may use a rotating bolt but other breech locking mechanisms can be employed. Sliding block The breech block in a sliding block slides across the face of the breech to close it. The sliding action is perpendicular to the axis of the barrel. When the breech block slides down to expose the breech, it is referred to as a falling block, as used in the Sharps rifle. A sliding block is common in artillery. A vertical sliding block rises and falls while an horizontal sliding block slides to one side. It is a strong design. The breech block is well supported by the receiver within which it slides and the mechanisms for opening and closing the breech do not have to act to any extent against the forces generated on firing. Side Hinged Breech Block A side hinged breech block is used in the Snyder Enfield and the Warner Carbine. The breech block is hinged parallel to the axis of the barrel and swings away to the side to expose the breech. Firing force is contained by the rear of the breech block bearing on the receiver. Trapdoor breech block. Commonly associated with the Springfield rifle, the breech block is hinged above the breech face and lifts up like a trapdoor to expose the breech. The breech is locked by a catch operating at the end of the breech block furthest from the hinge. It is similar in principle to a brake action. Rolling block. A rolling block can be described as a quadrant which is hinged below the breech. The quadrant rotates through approximately 90 degrees to provide access to the breech or close the breech. In the closed position, a number of different devices can be used to lock the quadrant and prevent it from opening. In the Remington rolling block rifle most closely associated with this type of breech block, the hammer also has a quadrant which cams behind the breech block and locks it. The Spencer repeating rifle also uses a rolling block. Peabody Martini Initially used in the Peabody rifle, it saw more widespread use in the Martini Henry and the subsequent Martini Enfield. It employs a breech block with a rear-hinged falling block design, 
in which the breech is opened by permitting the front of the breech block to drop down while pivoting on its hinge. Firing force is transmitted through the knuckle of the hinge and does not act directly on the hinge pin. The breech block design as has been called a falling or tilting block but in omitting the role of the hinge can lead to ambiguities. It is also used in the Krag Peterson rifle. Tilting block As a tilting breech block closes on the breech, it is tilted up at the rear but it drops into a recess at the end of its forward travel, thus locking the breech closed. Firing forces are transmitted to the locking shoulder at the rear of the recess. To unlock the breech, a slide or carrier moving rearward uses a wedge-like arrangement acting on the sides of the breech block to tilt it up at the rear and lift it clear of the locking shoulder. The breech block is then pulled rearward by the slide or carrier to expose the breech. In the closed position, the slide or carrier can also help locate the breech block in its locking recess. The carrier or slide can be operated by lever or pump actions or by gas, for automatic and semi-automatic fire. In line. The breech is opened by the breech block moving in line with the axis of the barrel and is locked in the closed position by an obstruction such as a cam, wedge, paw, or over-center levers. A roller lock is commonly associated with firearms produced by Heckler and Cook. This type of breech block can be adapted to cycle by lever, cocking handle or gas. The mechanism is usually designed so that a single action unlocks and then withdraws the breech block using either a slide or levers. The M1895 Lee Navy is of this general type, even if the travel of the breech block is not strictly in line with the axis of the barrel. Blowback Blowback actions use an inline breech block in which the breech is never locked and is held closed by spring tension alone. They are used in semi-automatic and automatic firearms using low-powered cartridges. It is common in semi-automatic rifles and pistol chambered for .22 calories rimfire cartridges and many submachine guns. A variation is blow-forward operation, in which the breech block is fixed and the barrel moves. Floating actions In most long arms, the barrel is firmly attached to the receiver and does not move relative to the receiver during operations. Most semi-automatic pistols firing the higher-powered pistol cartridges use a locked breech design. The action is manually cycled by moving the slide rearward. The slide contains the breech block and is initially locked to the barrel so that the combined assembly move together. A short movement trips the mechanism to unlock the barrel from the slide assembly, allowing the breech to open. When fired, recoil results in the same action. In many instances, the barrel and breech block remain in line. In the Browning High Power and Colt's M1911 pistol, the barrel is tilted slightly to release it from interlocking ribs, so in this respect, it may be likened to a tilting breech block, even though it is the barrel and not the breech block that tilts. This type of breech block configuration and recoil operation is not confined to pistols and may be found in machine guns and auto firing cannons. Interrupted screw Perhaps a variation on the rotating bolt, an interrupted screw provides greater strength than simple lugs while requiring only a partial rotation to release the breech block. The Welland breech block is such a design and is used on weapons with calibers from about 4 inches up to 16 inches or more. Falling screwed breech block The Ferguson rifle used a tapered screw plug inserted perpendicular to the axis of the barrel. It was charged with ball and powder and required only one rotation to permit loading. While novel and effective, cost was a factor for its limited acceptance. Split breech A less common type of breech is the split breech design known as the nutcracker. This type of breech consists of two counter-rotating sprockets, with a temporary breech being formed where they touch. Relatively few guns have used this design. The prototype Fokker Lamberger multiple barreled machine gun used this design, but it had numerous problems with ruptured cases. Another Fokker split breech rotary machine gun, CA 1930 was donated to Kentucky Military Treasures, according to the museum recorded proved unsuccessful because of its inability to seal breech cylinders. A couple of 1920s US patents by other inventors also proposed to use this principle. The British also experimented with the design in the 1950s for aircraft guns, without success. It has only been used successfully in low-pressure applications, such as the MK-18 Mod Zero grenade launcher. 
In artillery the forces are much greater, but similar methods are used. The Welland breech block uses an interrupted screw and is used on weapons with calibers from about 4 inches up to 16 inches or more. Other systems use a horizontal or vertical sliding block, in which a solid block is slid across the open breech from the side or bottom to seal the opening. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.